It has been a wonderful journey in the group stages of the UEFA Champions League on Joy 99.7 FM. And these teams will be celebrating their Christmas holidays already knowing that they will be featuring in the last 16 of the competition next year. Tough game. It's really nice to be here to play this kind of game, and so because to play here is really exciting. I mean, you're on the penalty box, twisting and turning, trying to left foot, then he take a shot. Bobby Jamidia makes a point with one hand on his eye. That was perfectly our eye. Bobby Firmino. We really need to make sure that we are ready for that game, and it's a big, it's a big task. It's really Napoli. Be prepared for something spectacular in the last lap of the group stage games. This is match day six of the UEFA Champions League. And you can bet on George Adler Jr. for the best of commentary tonight. It's the UEFA Champions League live on Joy 99.7 FM. And it's out to Griezmann. Oh. Kevin Abenzema. He wanted to be cute. Yeah, very cute. <laughs> and he was going in for the cute man himself, Mbappe. Who will have scored from an acute angle for sure. It's against the court. Karim Benzema can hit those long ones. He's back to the pop Pogba and he tries to kill! Oh no! <laughs> really difficult to say why we decided to partner or run commentary together. I think, uh, so I got to join FM before he did and I handled the 2014 World Cup commentary. I had a few partners along the way. Then Gary joined, of course, first of all, the the connection was there, but we didn't immediately strike that partnership. So I'd say we tried it, it worked out. We felt that no, this is something that we can work on and solidify. We felt that it would be a strong point and it just turned out to be that. So I'm the guy who gets the opportunity to scream and shout the players' names and run the commentary. And Gary is the guy who is able to summarize and he's got a very fantastic you know bank in terms of words and he's able to stay in the moment and coming with the right analysis just at the time and partnership has been great i mean so after the experiment in 2016 yeah we continued in 2017 with the champions league it was the 2018 world cup 2019 champions league and yeah I'd say it's been good and we've learned so much about ourselves along the way. Well, I never intended to be a commentator or summarizer at all. I mean, as with most things in my career, it came by chance and I grabbed it because I believe in always being prepared for whatever comes. So I joined Multimedia in 2015. Uh, we had Euro 2016 the following year. Sometime before, um, we had tried a few commentary games with qualifiers and things like that, but I was far away from that because I didn't think it was my calling or anything. But during Euro 2016, we split the duties, you know, to do commentary, summarization and all that. And I also got a commentary berth as well. I did the commentary. Clearly, I didn't have the voice for it. I had the vocabulary for it, but not the voice, which meant that, I mean, for those who know the way I speak, my voice tapers down. So I do not have the staying power, you know, the, how do I call it? The 90 minute voice, right? So I was more suited to summaries. And in one, as they say in English, serendipitous moment accidentally i paired with george he did commentary i did the summaries 
and that was it. After months of painfully sweet journey in European elite club competition, the dust is well and truly settled. Blue is the colour for this year's Champions League final, as Manchester City and Chelsea board their flight to Porto, seeking to end the strangers of season with the biggest prize of them all. As I joined Multimedia, I, was, I, I really loved those montages and mixing the music and those stuff. So I was already doing, I think, reports on air and when there's a Kotoko Hard to Fall game, I would do a bit of montage. So I realized that I was actually good at it. So I kept on doing it. You know, I used to do montages not without voice. Yeah, without my voice. So we would I'll add goals and other interviews and I'll make it sound interesting. So when the Champions League, we decided to do commentary on Joy FM, I think in 2017, yeah, that is when we decided to come up with something that will make it a bit, you know, interesting and unique. And that is where we started with the, with the Champions League intro. We call it, I call it the, pre the preamble. There was no shortage of drama at the start of the Champions League knockout stages. And a long one across the face of goal is it touched up and he's got the goal son right inside the goalkeeper six yard box. Finishes into the box here away from the oh, that is where we started and I did the first one. You know everything when you start, you know, there will be a lot of glitches and stuff. So it wasn't all that great, but as time went on, it became so good and I realized that hey. The Champions League intro is really interesting, so I, I dedicated a lot of time. Anytime there's a Champions League, I make sure I search and I sit down and I get, you know, ways to make it a bit interesting. So the montages, it has been an interesting journey from 2017 to 2021, actually. It has been an interesting journey and I love what I do, actually. I love what I do scenes from the Stadio di Dragao, so it's a worldwide welcome to you from the heart of Lisbon, the home of FC Porto. As the Blues set up to go, smells of the fixture, there's a width of gunpowder in one's nostrils. 16,000 Chelsea and Manchester City fans are rowdy up for this, as well it might be. The noise is peculiar. The statistics and the form tend to vanish from a position of relevance on this occasion. Who cares if Manchester City haven't won it before? Who cares if Chelsea are in the third final and have won it once? Who cares if Pep Guardiola has won it twice? Or oh, Thomas Tuchel never. The cuts remain stellar as always. The Vistas are A-list. Kettings up. Gary, are you ready for this? I am ready and I'm sure the players are ready as well. You know the interesting thing about today's games is that as for the managers, we remember Thomas Tuchel sitting on the PSG icebox last year. At the time, he had a cast in his leg. Today, he's on two legs and he's raring to go. Welcome to the Champions League final. Football primarily has become a television event, which means that if you are in a vehicle going home, you won't watch it, you won't see it. So the ability for radio to bring you that commentary and the way that George and Gary does it almost takes you to the scene of the game, into the stadium. It's powerful. I mean, it's priceless. You can't put any value on that. And that for me is it's a, it's a game changer in terms of, um, you know, the Ghanaian uh, English commentary. I don't think there's, there's, any, there's any media house or anybody or any group of people as, as competent as Gary and, and George in, in doing this. So they really transform the landscape when it comes to things I notice when I'm listening to commentary or watching football and there's this commentary. It's about the, the relationship that exists between the, the commentator and the summarizer. The, the, the almost telepathic understanding of what each other is thinking and, and the description and the, the complementarity that you see. The, George and Gary, they have that. It's, it's, it's just an inseparable union between the two of them when they're doing it. That is what sets them apart from everybody else. I don't, I don't see any pairing in Ghana with like, like that. It's pretty unique. And George, as a lead commentator, is just fantastic. And I think really um, in Ghana, there's nobody in the English commentary circles like him in, in terms of what he does. His depth, understanding of the game, the description, the understanding of the players, um, and the positions and the and, and what is happening on the pitch, it's comparable to anything else you see 
across the world. Um, and that really was set them apart. Thank you to everybody for joining us here. We love it. You're live on Joy 99.7 FM and live on Hits 103.9 FM. This is a special one. 13 time champions, Real Madrid, Africa Games, the six time champions, Liverpool. And Anne, this is coming to you from the Stade de France. And we need to hear a lot from you. Good ball into the penalty box there as Liverpool try to get it away. Real Madrid with a quick one down to the right hand side. And they'll love to keep it. I'm George Addy Jr. Joining me in commentary position is Gary L. Smith. Gary controlled on the head by Kunati, back out to the right hand side, oh, Anos lays it in there, taken away by Real Madrid, 27 minutes in this final, and we're still waiting for that moment that would almost break the ice, it's always important to get uh, yourself right in there, but it never says you are going to win it, Liverpool were right in there in 2005 in the final against AC Milan, and turned around the 3-0 deficit, that was crazy for a final in Istanbul. Real Madrid have had their own turnarounds against Atletico Madrid and we're looking for a good one tonight as well. But now it's a bit of the ball bouncing but still manages to keep it there turning out. Laid the ball out to the right and it's back into Modric. Modric for Real Madrid tries to pace up a bit. Cruz over it, right footed. Now onto the edge of the penalty box. Taken away by Liverpool and it's laid into it by Jordan Henderson. Fabinho controls. Fabinho hits a pass controlled on the thigh there by Mohamed Salah who goes over the halfway line. Salah with it and it's taken away by Felan Menigan. That was a pretty, pretty cheek of a pass. Took that away from Salah. Tried to kill it. The Liverpool wall watched that very carefully and it's still very tight into the centre circle. Alcantara then with the pass down to Henderson. Henderson lays it into the centre circle. Fabinho comes out of his little box and Henderson keeps it now almost at walking pace. Really, really difficult. It is. Liverpool have had 56.9% possession. Real Madrid 43.1. Liverpool six shots already. Real Madrid. Two was complete. It was really sweet. Henderson with the ball then. He's been in the thick of a first tonight. We're approaching the 40th minute mark and we're still looking for that first goal. Liverpool trying a bit. This incursion, they'll be hoping that it works out for them. This was uh, one that cannon off fell on Mendy. It's going to be a throwing going the way of Liverpool. Here's a loud uh, Alexander Arnold to come for it. So it'll be interesting to find out how it all goes. It's, uh, it's a big one, the Champions League final 2022. This is how it's come, what kind of a story it has been. It's on to the left-hand side. Robertson coming in, they tried to dribble, later a pass, turned and took an inch, and turned and took a yard, and wasn't able to hit this one right into it. And by that, cheeky smile. He's saying, well, I could have done better, or a defender was just too good. Was it a corner or is it a goal kick? Oh, they took a ricochet from where I stood. I think referee will go for a corner kick. Let's see if he agrees with me. He yes. does. Corner kick for Liverpool. 14 minutes inside the Stade de France. Live commentary on Joy 99.7 FM and on Hits 103.9 FM. This is coming in left footed, surely. Robertson over it. Hands up, left footed into the penalty box. Nodded out there by Real Madrid. Control the cat. Wonderful shot coming in there by the captain, Henderson, who seems to have something on tonight. That's a good shot. Was off target again, but I think perhaps the advert for the applause. Good stuff there by Henderson, good, but not good. exactly on target. That's what I thought. <laughs> How interesting it would be if the first goal came from the... So, well, you have to bid your time and see when you go in, but it's 42 minutes. All right, in last year's Champions League final, it was in this particular minute. Kai Havertz called the goal. Uh, we haven't had any goal here. Are we going to see a goal before the other first half? What do you think? That would be nice. Nice? That would be good for the crowd as well. Good for the crowd, I think so. Alaba with a pass down to the left-hand side then. And Real Madrid start to work their way again. And just back out there to Alaba, left-footed. It's a long ball that's gone in there. He's controlled the ball, then Karim Benzema keeping it. Turns out now, he's trying to hit the shot now. He's left it there. He can hit the ball, then Real Madrid is still keeping it there. And Karim Benzema! Nope, 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 nope. It won't stand. The, the goal, goal will not stand the down by Karim Benzema. Really with the ball, the touch of that spot. No, it won't stand. And it'll stay the way it is. What went wrong there? Offside. Time to review maybe, but it was uh, 
Well, Looks Real Madrid like fans don't like it though. The, the pass from Alaba was offside. They are checking on VAR. They have to check. Because it's on the matchings, obviously. Obinium! Yeah, Obinium. it should be on the matchings because I, I have to be fair, I, I'm not too sure what was wrong. And it's 57 minutes, or 58 minutes right now. Start de France, Paris hosting the 2022 UEFA Champions League final. Will we get a goal now? Valverde with the ball down the right hand side for Real Madrid. Into the penalty box, hits a shot, and it's a lovely touch now! And it's Vinicius Junior with a goal! Vinicius Junior had to touch the ball and smash out each other net there. And Real Madrid lead by one goal to nil. They have managed to break the ice. And that's exactly what they wanted and how this went they're going. The Brazilian boy wonder does it again. And I'll tell you what, George, when the ball was going into play into the box, the Real Madrid fans in the, in the start, the Aviation Social Centre started preempting it. Let's look at that again. Intricate passing, got to Valverde, and what a ball into the box there. Absolutely no hint of upside. Vinicius had the simplest task of beating the goalkeeper there. And yeah, Real Madrid lead by one goal to nil, the 13 time champions with that one. And it was a lovely touch there by Vinicius. Or it's just going to stand, I think it's going to stand definitely, but the slight, slight hit of players moving in and out the line. but. It sticks and it stays. And Real Madrid lead by one goal to nil. Precious, precious. And it had to be one of the main men who were the key sap plots coming into this. Vinicius Junior, the Brazilian. The and people right there in Real Madrid, can they find it? Now it's out to the left and they will allow this one to roll as we hit four minutes of the five minutes added on. The Real Madrid fans are beginning to feel it in the house. The Real Madrid fans are beginning to feel it. It's not over yet. It's not over. Four minutes and four seconds. They don't believe you, George. You said it's not over. They don't believe you. It's not over until it's over. They don't believe you. Liverpool fans are leaving their seats at the moment. There is still fun. There's still time. You have to believe. Live on Joy 99.7 FM. Live on Hits 103.9 FM. Commentary coming to you from the Vichy Social Centre. It's down out to the left hand side, Fabinho with the right foot and into the penalty box, heads go up! And Thibaut Couture, it's not the end of the game, but Thibaut Couture grabbed that very, very well. It's not over, the fans are happy here, the Real Madrid fans, but it's not over. Cruz waiting for the referee's whistle. Is it even going to happen in the end then? Liverpool have the ball down the left-hand side. They're looking to get over it. Rilash. Live commentary on Joy 99.7 FM waiting for referee Clement to appear as He's had a good look at it. And he calls for the Real end of the game. Madrid. Real Madrid are champions of the UEFA Champions League 2022. Champions for a 14th time. UEFA Champions League royalty once again. It's the Galacticals, the White Angels, who have found their way back in there. They win by one goal to nil, and I won this.
and the team they were playing against asked questions and then they responded. In, in this instance, they scored the first goal and they really. And, and once again, the, uh, once again, Liverpool were the better team on the day. Yeah. But Real Madrid were the more clinical. Efficient. Yeah, the efficient. Yeah, the efficient. So, uh, this was different because uh, first time we we're having outside broadcast yeah. and having the crowd come to listen to our commentary over the pictures. You know, there was no agitation left with them. So I, I think that was landmark in itself. Because normally when we go outdoor, you stay in your corner and do the radio stuff. But today we're able to manage radio and TV over the pictures and send back there. So, so I think, I think this is the first time we have actually done an outside broadcast to people. To thousands of people like this. Yes. This is the first time we've actually yes. done it. Yes. Not on radio, but actually to a live crowd yes. like this. And yeah. So it's another landmark moment for us as well. What is to come? Well, only God can say. Um, as far as we are working together, yeah. there's always never a lack of creativity, a lack of ideas, a lack of will, and definitely there's never a lack of of um, what? Everything. Of everything. Yeah. I mean, it's basically taking it one step, one step of the other. But doing this in front of fifty thousand or whatever, and. We're great. I think we've done television commentary, we've done radio commentary, we've done everything we need to do. Uh, so we're looking forward to bigger things to come. And, it, and bigger things means any, anything and just anything. anything. Because at this stage, anything is possible. Yeah. Everything is possible. In, in Ghana, over here, everyone knows their quality. I'm just looking forward to today being at the World Cup. <laughs> well, the sky is not the limit, it's the launch pad actually. And, um, we've seen uh, such duos, right, traverse their boundaries and go higher. Like we know of uh, Peter Drury and Jim Beglin. You know that kind of combination is is quite telepathic, and it's 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 quite wonderful to witness both of them. You know when they are doing their thing, it's fantastic, and I believe that the necessary encouragement must be given them so that that brand is preserved and projected out there. Well, I think we're one standard in this country. I think they are the peace cities. Um, their commentary is absolutely brilliant. And for George, even before I joined the multimedia um, company at home, sometimes when I'm listening to his commentary, I used to think this guy, he based for Yonki or something. But <laughs> I came and realized that he actually started from university, from his childhood university and all that. And also because he had a passion trained himself, went outside and all that and has learned from the best. So it's no surprise that he's one of the best in this country. I've, I'm yet to see anyone who comes close to him in this country and I'm delighted to be working with him. Listen, I'm always in awe of what they do, trust me. And seeing them, I mean, this is the first time I'm, I'm seeing them do it in the midst of such a huge crowd like this. And it's, they, 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 it was effortless, it was flawless, all the less, less. I mean, just, I mean, you just think of it. They were awesome, they were amazing. I mean, they are both on top of their games and I didn't expect any less. They always keep raising the bar, maintaining and even going past the bar. So, in the future, I'm just hoping that, I mean, they go higher. I can't wait to see Gary being the official, I mean, commentator for, I mean, the Champions League and all the Premier Leagues and all the big leagues out there. Same as Gary. I just, I mean, they should just aspire higher, go higher, reach higher, so higher. Yeah.